Quick update on that uh, 66 Tremolux from the other day. The seller decided not to issue any partial refunds or anything or any kind of accommodation, even though it was uh, listed as having all original Transformers and did not. And so the uh, would-be buyer has sent it back and that amp is leaving our lives. It's a shame. It, it would be a very good sounding amp, but um, it was the price paid for it was for an all original as far as the iron goes. So that's beyond my control. So I'm drowning my sorrows here in this uh, brown panel deluxe. And uh, we're going to get all this stuff out and get started putting some good stuff in its place. And I'll try not to kick the camera. And I'll try not to obscure the view too much as we go. I don't know if there's a perfect place for the camera to be. That broke off without me even... I didn't cut that. I just lifted it and it broke. That's one of the reasons I don't like J-hooked, you know stuff where this is on the old solder on the old lead that one's holding up better but you know it's kind of a crapshoot it's a crapshoot with uh, your high voltage caps not my favorite kind of crapshoot now because they did this series thing here which is not really necessary they cut this wire short it needs to reach over to here and i don't think it will i'm probably gonna have to replace that wire inside the uh, chassis which is a nice little complication. Anyway, let me uh, get some of this stuff out. I'm waiting for the iron to beat. Almost there. Probably be better if I point the mic kind of in my general direction. Let's, let's do that, see if the sound gets better. You, you guys let me know. Did that Does that sound any different, any better? I mean, you don't have to let me know. I'll, I'll hear it when I go back to do all the editing. I just realized I started the video with a mic pointing away from me. Not my finest moment. Let's see here. Ah, come on. Come on. Well, that's some stubborn ass solder in there. I'm running really hot and did not want to do anything. I tinned the tip. I might have lost the, the tinning on the tip of this thing. So I'm pulling a bunch of solder on there and just moving it back and forth and removing it in the metal sponge thing. Let's see if this makes a difference. Yeah, still some funky solder in there, but at least it's uh, acting like solder again. This uh, non-original 1K here was tax huddered in place down here. I'm wondering if my iron really needed to be tinned or whether the solder that's in here is just really crappy might be a combination of things there's a bit of old lead there from the old resistor that's long gone there's a 
another one. Might be from a cap that's long gone. Now that those have cooled, I'll toss them. And this 10K and 27K I will return with the amp, with the amp, but not in the amp. It is with the amp, but not of the amp. Hmm. Why is that not going to come out? This must be hooked under there really well. There it goes. Just the one screw present. It used to be two screws. I'll find another screw to put in there before it goes home. Let me get these wires up and ready to slide out. Then we'll take a look at that ground wire before we move on to the the uh, bias stuff. Kind of pull this out too. I clean uh, on both sides of it because I need to pull this black wire out. And sometimes it's easier to do if that hole's larger. So. Push it through first. Move the camera back a bit. And pull the tubes out of the amp so when I turn it upside down, I don't have to put it on the proper bench supports just for this quick thing. All right, still in focus, good. All right, so here's the other end of that black wire. So let me untwist it here. Huh, I only need to get about another inch to make it work. So maybe I could just buy some of this slack here. Let's see. Let's try that first. If I don't wrap it as many times as it used to be wrapped, maybe that'll buy me the slack. And back through that hole. I don't want there to be so much tension on this that it becomes a problem. So, uh, all right, that will now reach. All right, so I don't have to replace this. Just had to buy myself that little bit of slack because someone cut that. If you're gonna do a change like the previous guy did, where running the ground to here instead of to here for whatever reason, you don't have to cut the original wire. You can just have a little bit of excess in here. Better to have the to have and not need than need and not have. Anyway, so that's a good bit of labor we just saved ourselves. I'm gonna give this area a quick clean. People ask which isopropyl I use. I do have the really pure, 99% pure stuff. And I will use that if I'm doing a cleaning of a circuit board where it really is critical. And it rarely, really is for this kind of stuff. For 99% of the time, I'm using 91% from the drugstore. And then I use the, the really pure stuff only when needed because the really pure stuff is more expensive. And if there's no benefit spending money, why spend the money? Move the chassis out of the way without hitting the camera. See, I learn, I learn. Ah, I'll get some of this general dust up. I clean it fairly regularly, but uh, get all these 
60s amps in lately. And those early 70s Marshalls, and they all leave a little bit of their funk behind. All right, so I've shown this in a bunch of videos lately. I'm gonna replace the wires in this one as opposed to repurposing them because I wanna get this done in a more timely manner. I'm waiting for the iron to heat up. There we go. Remember these wires here are actually the old negative leads of the original capacitors. But we can do the same job with some new application of bus wire. Which is quite a bit faster to do like this. Now I've shown this in a lot of videos recently and I'm not going to do the whole thing here where you can see it. Are we in focus? Might be better for you guys. Um, sorry, the camera tells me it's in focus by putting red highlights on things. And not, not everything uh, really shows the red highlight, like this black or dark gray. Anyway, I'll heat up the eyelet. And then I'll tap it and drive out 90% of the solder. I'm actually going to do the rest of these over my trash can rather than on screen. So, well, this will be mostly a real-time video. I'm going to edit out this next little bit. All right, that only took about two minutes tops. We get this old solder off the paper towel. And uh, get some of the excess solder off that's remaining. Someone, well, People always comment that wouldn't it be faster just to replace the fiber board, the old bias board or whatever, with the new one? The answer is almost never yes. The answer is almost always no, because this is not something that most companies carry for a 62, you know, 60 through 62 deluxe like this. And uh, even if they do carry it, there's no guarantee that all the holes are in the exact same location. Certainly no hole, no guarantee that the drill holes are in the same location. And while, yeah, I could buy some of this fiber board and some eyelets and make one myself, that's at least an hour, if not two, to set it up and, you know, plan everything out, go out there and drill all the, the holes and stake all the eyelets and all that fun stuff. Versus spending, you know, typically 15 to 20 minutes tops to to get one of these back in real good condition like this. If there was an off the shelf turnkey wonderful solution to this that cost 20 bucks and would take 10 minutes, A, I would use it. B, I would already know about it and I'd be telling you guys about it. This is the way to do it right. It's cost effective, reliable, and guaranteed to fit. Those are all good things. Almost done with the heavy lifting here. All right, now I'm gonna break up that old flux. Those of you who've seen this kind of video from me before know exactly all these steps. For those of you who haven't seen this kind of thing before, I'm not using a lot of pressure. I'm not actually scraping the surface of the board. This is a very hard tempered edge on this screwdriver. And the old flux is pretty soft and breaks up into a powder with just the slightest pressure. And when I wash all this off with isopropyl, this powder will come right off. If I don't do this step first, instead of the iso coming right off, it forms sludgy piles. All this stuff just gets soft and gummy and stays where it is on the board 
for a while. These are things I have learned along the way. I've got that Crosby, Stills, and Nash song under my head, in my head now, Not under my head. That's pretty good. Now I've got King's X. I hear music over my head, in my head. I'm just having a prepositional conundrum in a musical way. I assume a great many of you know the uh, Crosby, Stills, and Nash song I'm referring to. But uh, if you don't know the King's X song I'm referring to, look that up. I hear music over my head. They should have been huge. Brilliant songwriting, production, musicianship, soul, entire thing. And they were just slightly before their time. Last time I saw them, I think it was 92, 93. Pearl Jam had them opening up for them on the Dogman tour. Or not the Dogman tour, but, well, King's X was doing, it was touring for Dogman. It was the Versus tour for... Pearl Jam. So it might have been a little bit later than 93. I don't remember now. That's so long ago. I mean, it seems like two weeks ago and forever ago at the same time. All right, this is clean. And as you've seen, I now heat the eyelets up to drive any moisture away from them. Anyway, um, the guys in Pearl Jam must have ap appreciated King's X because they had them on that tour. And there were many bands that year that sold more records and probably would have filled more seats. Though I think that year Pearl Jam probably filled enough seats on their own. They seem to still be doing okay, too. But I know that some of the guys in King's X have had less of an idyllic time in that wonderful, wonderful industry. But aside from all that, Great, great music. Let me get some fresh paper towel. And give the uh, backing board a, a little clean too. It's just got small amounts of funk on it over the years. I'll do that over the trash can. I always spill little drops of ISO on my jeans. I have weird little ring-shaped stains after a day on the bench because like one drop of alcohol will fall on and dry so the inside of it is, is lighter than the outside. It always comes out in the wash, so far at least, but it, I don't know. Looks odd like I'm turning into my jeans are turning into polka dots. All right, so here's the board. Uh, and I know that this is going to go here. They'll probably fit this a little bit later. I'm going to go ahead and size this. This is a 1K 5 watt. 5 watts probably overkill. Original was 2 watt. And for comparison, this is a 2 watt resistor. Uh, but I like when this is, you know, in this case, this resistor is serving the role of a choke. And so if there's a, sh a problem with a tube on the screen here, this could have more current present than it uh, would normally have. It could kill a one or two watt resistor. The five watt is less likely to die and the five watt is less likely to get hot. So it's less likely to shorten the life of any capacitors that are, in, in, you know, along with it. Let's see. Got a 10K here. 
That's going to go here. There are places and circuits to use resistors rated pretty much precisely for the wattage present because uh, being on the edge can sometimes yield a, a certain character that we want to the sound. And there are places where mild overkill is beneficial. And when you have a resistor in place of a choke, that is certainly one of those places where you want a little bit of overkill. So five watt and that Vichy low mass wire wound does the job very nicely. So trimming off the excess on those new resistors, leaving just enough bent over that they're mechanically in place without solder being applied. I'm trying to control where the cutoffs go so I don't step on them way tonight barefoot. Or pretty much any time barefoot. It's not like there's a certain time of day when that feels okay. And I will put this in place once I have the capacitors in place. Now, speaking of the capacitors, I've got some of these already done, but um, I've always, I mentioned in a video a couple weeks back about how frustrating it is when the caps arrive and and they have, you know, the leads are all bent up from being a plastic bag. Some people were kind enough to give me their own tips. And this is the tip which has worked the best for me. I've got two pieces of steel. And I'm just pressing firmly, but not hard and turning. And the whole thing straightens out. So two flat pieces of steel. And uh, if uh, it's a larger cap than this, and I won't fit right there, I'll do it on the edge of the table. So the table beneath and the bit of steel on top. This has worked really well. So to everyone who suggested this and variations on this, I thank you. I never pretend to know everything on this channel. I know what I know. And I'll sing what I've said, we come and we go. That's the thing that I keep in the back of my head. Yeah, that's how my brain works. Thank you, Mr. Simon. So anyway, I've got these all ready, straightened, and I'm gonna pre-bend where they go and with an eye towards the value being up. And the pre-bending doesn't have to be precise, precise. You've got a little bit of wiggle room. I just use my thumbs. So that's the 40. Uh, original, oh, I should mention this. Originally, this amp had 16, 16, 16, 16. The deluxe reverb, the later version of this, had uh, uh, 32, 16, 16, 16. We're doing uh, 40, 20, 20, 20, which will give a better, more reliable sound with 500 volt caps rather than 475 volt rated caps for a bit more longevity. Uh, no one's going to hear the difference between 32 and 40 microfarad. No one's going to hear the difference between 16 microfarad and 20 microfarad. You'll notice the difference if a 475 volt cap has 480 volts on it, whereas the 500 volt cap is going to say, thank you very much, I'd like another. And um, <clears throat> you will hear a difference between 16 microfarad or 20 microfarad and 40 microfarad on the reservoir node, but it'll be a difference that you'll appreciate. You'll have less hum, more clarity, uh, less uh, ghosting, and a little bit more low end. So again, before I put these in place, <coughs> time for a little bit of silicone. And uh, I've mentioned this before, it's non-reactive RTV. So here's the 40, very small amount, just on the bottom of that cap. That's all it takes on the, the clean surface of the board. And in 20 years, when this cap is replaced by the next tech, she will not have any problems removing that little bit of silicone because it's not going to adhere to the board perfectly, just enough to keep the cap body from vibrating. And you can see I bent it over on both sides. And I'll just go down the line. Let's see, I've got one of these caps bent longer than the others. Which one is which? That's the next one. The next um, recap in 20 years, the problem will not be 
removing that silicone, the problem will be figuring out a way to fit radial caps in this old axial doghouse. Maybe someone will make a radial to axial converter in the meantime. I've been thinking about building some kind of PCB direct retrofit thing for situations like this. But the trouble is there's just so many models of Fender. There's so many variations on what the parts are, how many parts there are, where they go. I'm clever enough to, to do it. That's not that I'm it's real, I'm not bragging. Lots of people are clever enough to do it. It's a matter of finding the time to sit down and figure it out because you don't want to build Rev A and then realize, oh, I forgot all about the basement. So then you've got to make changes in the Rev B. Then you've got, you know, then you figure out, oh, actually, if I'd done this, I could have done up through 1978 as opposed to up only up through 1970. Then you have all these different revisions out there floating around. And it's hard to keep track. All right. So this resistor, I want to mount up a little bit so that it's off the board. I want to bend it like that. Um, actually, I think I'm going to do even a step beyond. Let me get a special tool. Brad of Brad's Garage was cool enough to send me these away a while back. Handy dandy for things like this. Just trying to evenly space it. That's close enough. Uh, I could do a little bit better, but crap. See, I was talking to you instead of looking where, where the first one was, and I eyeballed the second one incorrectly. There you go. Those bends are really great for PCBs, but they're going to work for my purpose of just getting them consistently the right height off, though it's a little bit hard to get started. That'll work. It's, it's going to fall like this, but when it's in place on the, on the, uh, you know, it's, when it's back in place in the app, it'll be pressed where it needs to go. So I'm going to trim off the worst of the excess so it has just enough for mechanical support. Trimming off excess on the cap leads, leaving just enough hooked underneath that they want to stay where they are. And again, if you, sorry, if you're, if you've seen me do this in 30 videos and you're still watching this, I feel for you, you know, you've seen this a lot, but a lot of people have not seen this. And I never know which video of mine will be someone's first time on the channel. So now I've got all these with the little bitty leads looked over. So it's not going to pull up from this side. If you look from the side here, you can see that each of them has got a nice curve to it. No stress on the uh, on the cap where the leads join the body. Small amount of silicone, which will hold them firmly in place. It'll set up about 30 minutes from now, but I'm not going to wait that long to put it back in the app. But and when I put, if I put it in carefully, this resistor will pop up to where I want it to be. It'll be elevated off the PCB, so if it gets hot, it won't uh, spread the heat where it should not be. But uh, I think I'm going to step outside for a minute and stretch my legs. I've been sitting here longer than the extent of this video. I was planning for this and uh, getting some parts orders together. And uh, it's not good to sit inside all day. I've been that a little bit better. Come on. This one doesn't want to do what I want it to do. Going to. There we go. All right, when I come back in, we'll resume from this point and put it back in the app. All right, let's put this back. Sorry, things are falling on my bench. Come on, really? Sorry, power cable's in the way. 
Doop -doop -doop -doop. Focus, focus, focus. How's that gonna be? All right, so all these wires up. Did I lose a wire there? No, okay, good. Don't have a lot of room on that red one there. Damn, boys, this is a tight spot. Come on. Okay. That's good, that's good. Let's slide this in place. I mean, I'll have to be careful when I put, the, put it down to make sure that resistor lines up the way I want it to. Right now it's kind of flopping in the breeze. Okay. Put that one screw in place. Since we only have the one right now, I should have a screw like this somewhere in my stash of things over the years. Let's try to get that to line up with the other hole. So when the time comes, it'll be where I want it to be. Let's do these two short ones first. Oh crap, I forgot to do the, the grounds. Brad, you infected me. All right, I'm gonna take this out and put some jumper wires here from the bottom, which is what I meant to do before. Sorry, Brad did the same thing in his video the other day. And uh, everyone told him how brave he was to post it anyway. So hopefully you guys are feeling the same. The important thing is not that I never make mistakes. Important thing is, Mistakes tend not to leave the shop. Let me get my bus wire out. This will be pretty easy to do. I don't have to lift the whole thing up to do it. The hardest part of this is finding where the bus wire ends start. I want to get some pulled out and semi-straight. All right. So there. About the same length. For the other one. All right, so I just want to bend it up so that it will go exactly where I want it to go. Lift this end up. Slide it in place. I guess change the camera angle. Sorry. Put this back. And 
And for the record, yes, I could have edited this out and not share that goof. But I've been told by our reliable sources that people find it reassuring when they see me make goofs like that. So I do it for you guys, really. It's not easy that being this naturally good at everything, you know, as if. I have my particular strengths and I have my particular weaknesses, just like anyone else. I am, in general, pretty good at working on this kind of stuff. I am terrible at remembering to get things from the dry cleaners. To the point where I've actually had shirts uh, that when I went back to the dry cleaners to get them, they gave me a look and said, that shirt was given away to charity or whatever. Six months ago, we called you. My bad. They weren't shirts I was especially fond of, apparently, but Still, it rankles. I'll clean up that little bit of flux later. All right. Now on this ground wire here, where we bought just enough slack, let's see if we really do have just enough slack, as I suspect. Let me expose a little bit of that. All right, we're making it, but just. Meanwhile, this one's mocking us with its slack. Ah, and then pulling out because of its slack. I'm gonna pull that slack too, and push that down into the amp so we have a little less slack right here. All right, let's see. Do the yellow one first. This is the screen, the screen connection. And I know my hand, my left hand blocks some of the things. Sorry. Someday I'll have like three or four cameras set up to do this kind of stuff. Kidding, that's be like going to the dry cleaners, but I will eventually have at least two cameras set up to do this stuff so I can guarantee 95 of everything, 95% at least of everything will be visible. I'll still find a way to block the occasional shot because I'm a doofus, but you know. All right, now I just got to get this brown wire for the phase inverter. The yellow is the preamp. This. This yellow down here.
But now for some pretty domes. As I've mentioned multiple times, these things are already soldered properly with just the fillet filling the eyelet and holding everything in place. But the old fenders had domes, solder domes, so I replicate those. People like the way they look. It doesn't hurt anything, though, occasionally. In the process, a wire will come back out like that. How is it that I keep getting text messages when I have my phone set to do not disturb? Anyway, all right, I think that's kind of gonna be where this video stops. I'm going to continue through and, uh, do the bias and the other caps uh, so we can hear this thing in the next video. But I think this is as much as I'm going to feel like editing later tonight. And uh, thank you for watching. It's always appreciated. A little bit of wax there. I wonder how that got on there. How many decades ago that little bit of wax got on there. Um, this can be a, a good sounding amp. Uh, the best guess I have, and other people in the comments on the first video on this app agree, is that this is probably from 62. There is a date stamp at the very top right corner of the tube chart that I missed at first because it looked like one of the later stamps added when this came into the factory in uh, late 64. But it seems to be saying that this is uh, from a certain month that I forget in 1962. And that lines up with everything else in the app. So tentatively calling this 1962, even though it has a 1960 output transformer, and of course the 1965 power transformer, which we will get to next video. Anyway, this is enough to be editing later tonight, I think. So thanks for watching.